hey there welcome to the third session in the previous session we have learned what is a graph ql in this session we will see how it is different from the average as well as how the graph ql request will be executed if you are not familiar with the average then it's okay here is a brief detail about it average stands for representational state transfer it is an architectural style that define the set of constraint to be used for creating the web service REST is based on the HTTP method and the HTTP code. We generally use the HTTP GET method to retrieve the data, push for add, put for update, and delete for the deleting the data. And each request has the unique endpoint and written the data that define in the server side. Here is a simple request for the REST service. The client will send the HTTP GET request on this endpoint. Here we must pass the user ID for which details we are obtaining. Thus, our way process it and send back the data in this format. Again, the client will send the request to the server for obtaining the repository list for that user. The server will process and return the adjacent array of repository object, which include the ID, name, description, and URL. However, the client is just interested in the name and URL only. There is no way that the client can inform the server to just return those two fields only. Here, client must ignore the additional fields. And here we have sent the two individual requests for obtaining the user detail and the its repository detail. But in the GraphQL, we can handle this in the single request. Here is the example of the GitHub's GraphQL API. The client will here specify that the client is expecting only below fields. Obtain the user detail for this login name. Include just ID and name for it, as well as obtain the repository detail from which it just obtained the name and the URL. GraphQL has only one endpoint for the all requests, so client will send the request to that endpoint. The server will obtain the request detail and give the data as per the client's request. Here, the client will only get the fields that are required, so it save the network data. I know it's a really boring to learn and understand only theoretical concept of something. From the next session, we will learn how to create the simple GraphQL queries. And from the 21st session, we will dig our hand in the coding for creating our own GraphQL API.